What do the Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield franchises all have in common? Well, a lot. They're all juggernaut FPS titles beloved by millions of people for the last two decades. They all arguably were the best well received during the late 2000s to early 2010s, when they were all fiercely competing with one another, especially Halo and Call of Duty. But these days, they're all in drastically different places and have varying levels of popularity and success. Call of Duty being the most popular and pulling in the most money year over year, the difference between these franchises' success lies in the manner in which they were handled. It's my opinion that COD's peak was Black Ops 2 in 2012, Halo peaked with Reach in 2010, and Battlefield with Battlefield 4 in 2013. This timeline roughly coincides with the turn of the console generation in 2013. And when I say peak, I mean in terms of overall quality. It's true that Call of Duty makes much more money than the other franchises, and the new engine that was introduced in 2019 makes for some graphically stunning games. But the general consensus among the broader community is that the new CODs don't quite scratch the itch that the old ones did. Something I noticed during the transition to the seventh console generation is what I refer to as the mainstreamification of video games. For about a decade before this point, gaming had been exploding in popularity and the general population was beginning to view the pastime as more socially acceptable as opposed to the niche, nerd-oriented activity it was once seen as. What tends to happen in any industry as more people take notice, so too do large corporations. Once it was proven that video games were here to stay as a popular pastime activity, companies saw the lucrative opportunity and began to invest more and more money into the industry, eventually exploding it into the powerhouse it would eventually become. Today, the gaming industry parallels Hollywood in terms of gross earnings, a figure that was not even close 20 years ago. These older games had soul. They encouraged a social atmosphere. Pre-game lobbies were a place where you could meet new people, make new friends, talk trash, and everything in between. But why do games such as Halo Infinite do away with pre-game lobbies and limit how much you can interact with other players? In that game, you can only communicate with teammates via voice and text chat, while you cannot do the same with players on the enemy team. It feels lifeless. In the past, the game you played was more of a social experience. These days, gaming feels hyper-individualistic. Split-screen gaming is much less common than it used to be. I noticed when I first got my Xbox One, I simultaneously got my first flat-screen TV ever. Almost all the games I played were only able to have one player at a time on the console. <coughs> Why is it that we upgrade to a much larger and higher definition screen, and yet we can only use it for ourselves and not share the extra space with our friends on the couch? I'm not saying all modern AAA titles are bad, or that the industry as a whole is doomed. Far from it. I just want to make the point that the quality these titles used to ship with was much higher before the 7th console generation hit, as opposed to what we have now. Games like Halo 3 and Black Ops 2 were much more complete titles at launch than their contemporary counterparts, and it's because publishers know that they can get away with having developers ship their games half finished and still make a ridiculous profit in the process. We the consumers and lovers of these video games deserve better, not only because we pay them our hard earned money for their product, but because we know that they can do much better than this. If the quality of the games we were receiving 15 years ago was so high with the comparatively limited technology, then the industry can certainly do the same today. I think the reason a lot of us think gaming sucks now is the same reason we think a lot of other things do. The internet. The internet allows everyone's voice to be heard which allows good and bad ideas to be shared instantly. People say there are more idiots in the world these days, but I beg to differ. There's the same amount as before, they're just able to be much louder and have their voices heard. And the same goes for the gaming industry. To be clear, I don't want to be negative for the entire video. I'm trying to approach this topic with a glass half full mindset. But I do want to lay down a little pros and cons list real quick. Let's start off with some of the cons, and then I'll do the pros. The internet made it possible to release games unfinished and fix them later on. I absolutely disagree with it, but sadly companies do it all the time. It's much easier to cheat these days, whether you're on console or on PC. You don't own the games you buy anymore. You merely buy access to a license that can be revoked at any time. And unfortunately, it's totally legal to do so, considering we all signed the EULAs to play modern video games. Most game purchases now are digital downloads. When was the last time you bought a physical copy of a game and popped the disc into your console? Don't get me wrong, 
It's nice to have the option to buy a game from the comfort of your home, but they have us by the balls. And even if you buy a physical copy, you still don't own the game. Only the license to play, which as I stated before, can be revoked at any time. And with PC, all sales are digital, so physical copies are completely out of the question anymore. Many companies have turned to sleazy, scummy, greaseball tactics in order to milk customers out of money. The most notable examples of these money-making schemes are battle passes, loot boxes, and one-off microtransactions, usually for cosmetics. The amount of space games take up on your hard drives today are astronomically large, and often a handful of games take up most of the space on your device. Live service gaming is a crap business model and relies on disgusting business practices in order to survive. Also, these games are entirely dependent on an internet connection, which I see as a negative. Not to mention the fact that these games require constant updates in order to even play. Some of them feel like you update the game more than you play it. Looking at you, Update Legends, uh, I mean Apex Legends. Since it's usually required to have an internet connection to even fully install a game, if you have a slow connection or none at all, you're pretty much shit out of luck. Now with the cons out of the way, I'd like to talk about some of the pros. We now have crossplay enabled with many games, which allows us the ability to play video games with our friends and family, regardless of what piece of plastic they choose to play on. I know some of you will disagree with crossplay being a good thing due to the immense skill gap between controller and MK and higher prevalence of cheating. However, being able to play video games with your friends, regardless of your system, is a great thing. The web has allowed more developer teams to make their own games without the need for expensive advertisement campaigns. Nowadays, you can just make a Twitter, TikTok, or YouTube channel and promote your idea for free. On PC, you've always had the option to use whatever peripherals you chose. However, with the advent of crossplay, many games now allow console players to use controller or keyboard and mouse if they so choose. The modding scene is getting better and better by the day as newer technologies and developer approved mod tools are made available to prospective modders. And the availability of mods is beginning to spread to console. Gaming is becoming increasingly more accessible day by day considering you can play on mobile, console, or PC. Some games are even totally crossplay between all three of these methods. For example, Minecraft Bedrock. Many new games look and feel absolutely incredible, thanks to increased graphical fidelity and decades of improvement in regards to the way games are made. When a developer does release a great game these days, oh man does it shine. When done right, gameplay feels smoother than ever, graphics look absolutely stunning, and the stories will stick with you forever. Quality will always be noticed for what it is and will be recognized. Notable games, in my opinion, are Red Dead Redemption 2, Spider-Man 2018, Breath of the Wild, Ghost of Tsushima, and Pal World. Projects like the Master Chief Collection strive to keep older games alive. Activision took a very rare W last year in restoring all the OG COD matchmaking servers on 360 and PS3. Many devs are making a conscious effort to keep legacy titles alive by either remastering them or simply porting them forward to modern machinery to ensure they are not lost to time. Individual modders also help to keep games alive, such as the recent community effort to restore the original Halo 2 matchmaking service. And shout out to everyone who made that happen. That is fucking awesome. Even with all the problems the gaming industry has, I still think we're in a net positive position. Sure, many companies engage in shady business practices by trying to nickel and dime us for every last cent while releasing games in an unfinished state. But we can't forget that we can still play all our favorite older games while also being able to enjoy great new titles that are released in a finished state. I guess the point I'm trying to make with this video is that while many aspects of modern gaming leave a sour taste in our mouths, we have more access and options to play video games exactly the way we want than ever. AAA developers might be dropping the ball as a whole lately, but those aren't the only games to play. There's a wider selection than ever before. People will complain, and a great many of their points are valid, but don't let all the negativity ruin your gaming experience. After all, the reason we play games is that we love them, and this is a hobby we all care deeply about. We want to spend time with our friends enjoying video games, and we want to see the gaming industry prosper and progress in a healthy way. We can make our voices heard by speaking up, and we can vote with our wallets, because it seems to be the only language gaming companies understand. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you hated it, leave a dislike. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. What are your thoughts on what I said in this video? Leave a comment with your opinion below. I want to start a discussion. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. If you stuck around till the end, you're an OG OG triple OG and I love you for it.
Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.